All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just to make sure everyone is crystal clear, you have a test on Monday, not Wednesday. I can't test you Tuesday. So we are testing on Monday. Your assignments aren't due until Wednesday. That's me trying to be kind. So you don't have to turn anything until Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. This is all quarter two. We get that, yeah? Yes, okay, we just finished. Okay, so what do you got, Joseph? So the test on Monday is going to be podcast since the day tomorrow. Yeah. And it's what's on it's a normal week's content. It's not hard. This stuff is really easy. It's the very end of the unit, so it's a lot of continuity and changes. It's like pulling things through and making sure you see things. It's it's like the easiest week of the last four weeks. So you'll be fine, and I am here to coddle you and support you all because I'm going to be nice for the next three days because this is important to Joseph and Hayden, and that's why I'm here. You can't yell that by me. It's a little aggressive, but we get super long. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't get things wrong. Perfect. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're week nine. We are week nine. So I do want to cover a couple little things that I kind of glazed over super quick last week. So we're going to go back just a smidge, and we are going to talk about... Uh, the Portuguese. So your first section, your subheading is going to be the Portuguese and the Indian Ocean Basin. Okay. Why are the Portuguese in the Indian Ocean Basin? Who can give me a good evidence-based answer? Henry. Vasco da Gama went like, from uh, Portugal all the way to India. Okay. Vasco da Gama is going to set up ports, but what is a better answer? that says Portugal is absolutely all in on the Indian Ocean Basin, Catherine. 30 of 43. Perfect, because do you know any of those ports that he created? No. Exactly. Treaty of Tordesillas will score every single time. You need to have down the Treaty of Tordesillas gives Portugal the Indian Ocean Basin, AKA New World. Okay. The Portuguese are obviously the first ones to go around the uh, southern tip of Africa. Okay, which is where my family is? He gets married tomorrow. He gets married tomorrow. That is also the craziest idea. Anyway, um, they are going to pop up ports. Now, you do need to know that as the. I almost fell off my chair. Would you have laughed really, really hard? Yes, very yeah. much. Very much. Oh my god, Virginia, you were shaking your head so violently. Yes, I unexpected. Lied. Unexpected. I would have lied. Okay. <laughs> Vasco da Gama is going to be setting up all these ports. Now, as all, as all these ports are set up, the Portuguese are going to make money. That makes That's obvious, correct? Because they're going to charge ships to come in and all that stuff, port fees and all that. They're also going to elevate the, ev elevate the wealth of the Ashanti and the Kingdom of Congo. So as the wealth of Portuguese grows, so does the wealth of the Ashanti and the Kingdom of Congo. Who can tell me why? It makes perfect logical sense. What are the Kingdom of Congo and the Shanti doing? Scott? Oh, they're selling slaves. Slaves, yes, they are slave traders. So who is buying the most slaves? Portugal. Portugal, which is why the Portuguese wealth is going up and so is the wealth of the Ashanti and the Con Kingdom of Congo, okay? Do you think this is going to make them very popular with their peers? No, because this isn't normal trading that's been happening for centuries. This is a new type of slavery, which is going to be even more uh, demonstrative. So with that being said, you do need to know that they're going to raid these two. The two places that are going to rebel the most are going to eventually be these two. You need to know that the Portuguese are also going to take over the Swahili coast. And this is going to break the back and the money of Africa. Why? Why does it break the back and the money of Africa? Hayden. Don't they like set up like the trading posts all around the coast just to like you know take over all the trade? Okay, but why is the Swahili coast gonna break the back and the wallet of Africa? We know the Swahili coast. Come on. Why? Come on. Henry? Swahili coast are kinda linked to Africa to gain the American trade with them. Who can raise their hand and tell me an empire that's on the Swahili coast? 
Someone other than Henry James. No, those are in Africa. Those are in America. No. Andrea? Great Zimbabwe, yes! Kingdom of Aksum, yes! Ethiopia, yes! All of these amazing African empires are all on the East Coast because where was all the money? The Indian Ocean Basin on the East Coast of Africa. So when the Portuguese get there and they're like, damn, these places are doing well, guess what they do? They take them over. So now, are the populations of Africa making their own money? separate from the Europeans? No, it is then going to turn the African nation dependent on the Europeans to make money, and is that a good look? No, so that is a huge deal. When they take over the Swahili coast, it is going to break the independence of the Africans. <coughs> All right, perfect. Skip a space center at Japan. Okay, you need to know the Portuguese and the Dutch try to get Japan. Portuguese and the Dutch try to take Japan and then begin trading partners with them. The Japanese hate the Portuguese. Why do you think they hate the Portuguese? Why do you think they hate them? Got a key? Okay, they're really going to push Christianity. And who's got probably the biggest ego between the Portuguese and the Dutch? The Portuguese. Remember, they're the first ones to be in the Indian Ocean Basin. They're the first ones coming over the trade route. And right now, the Portuguese are at their peak, yes? Okay? So, the Portuguese come in and start calling the shots. And the Japanese are like, who the hell are you? Okay? So, the Japanese are going to restrict the Portuguese immediately. Okay? And they're going to do exclusive trading with just the Dutch. They are doing exclusivity with the Dutch. Now, during this time period of meeting the Portuguese and the Dutch, we start having Christianity. You need to put a big star, and you need to know that the Japanese will do anything it takes to protect Japanese culture. They've done it before. When the threat of the Mongols came, what did the Japanese do? Henry? They fought them off. Okay, let's not act like they defeated the Mongols. Uh, horse riding people who got on boats probably wasn't going to work out well. There also was a tsunami twice that came by and wiped out the Mongols. So it looked like the gods were against it. Okay, and on the third note, okay, the Mongols really, it wasn't going to work out well for them because they were already starting to see the Black Death. Okay. The Japanese are going to close their borders to China when the threat of the Chinese influence or the Mongol influence becomes too big. They shut doors. Okay? They will do whatever it takes to protect their culture. They are a monoculture. Today in Japan, they are a monoculture. If you move to Japan and you are not on the American base, in Osaka, I think it is, um, if you are not on the American base, you need to really blend in and mix in. They really do not want people of great different cultures spreading different ideas and stuff like that. They are very much monocultures, okay? So, with that being said, the Japanese smell the threat of Europeans and they close their doors in 1637. You absolutely need to know that. In 1630, I'm sorry. 1630, you need to know they close their doors, okay? They absolutely shut out. They will only trade on an island off the shore with the Dutch. That's it. Now, the reason why they picked the Dutch is because when they closed their doors in 1630, the most powerful country in the basin is going to be the Dutch. The Portuguese are on their decline, the British are rising, but the Dutch have been pretty consistent and they like the Dutch. When the doors reopen in 1787, Um, it's going to be forced open by an American. Yeah, is that exciting? Yeah. We're coming. We're coming. And we're going to do our own atrocities. So come on. Okay. Yes. What? The, the Americans? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're coming. Okay. I'm just letting you know that they're coming. Okay? So the Americans are coming. All right. 
you do need to know that closing the doors is going to have two benefits. Okay? The Japanese are going to have two benefits. A, it is going to protect Japanese culture. Okay? They're going to ban the Christians. All the Christians who are left behind that they find, they drown them. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You're a Spider Man. Who's your guy that you guys know for Spider Man? Andrew Garfield, yeah. Andrew Garfield was in a movie about the Christians in Japan. Spoiler alert, Peter Par whatever his name is. Andrew Garfield, his character drowns upside down in the ocean. Yeah, that's how they killed all the Christians. <laughs> they put them upside down to be disrespectful to God, and then they, uh, when the tide was low, they put them out there, so as the tide rose, they drowned. That's pretty cool. Is that for to be upside down? What? Well, they were just trying to, because then a lot of the Christians didn't want to be killed in the same way as um, Jesus did. So they were trying to, like, try to figure out how to do it and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. You guys didn't go see that movie, I assume? No. Was it really? Good? It came out right after Spider-Man. That was his big thing after Spider-Man. Apparently it's good. I don't know. Didn't see it. Anyway, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, you do need to know that it is going to keep Japan's culture intact. The bad thing is it's going to, for, uh, it's going to force Japan to fall behind significantly. So when they open their doors and there's an American standing there, they're like, what the hell is an American? <laughs> and then we say, hello, we're going to blow up your mountain if you don't trade with us. So guess what we do? We blow up a mountain until they play with us. Yeah, it's kind of cool. What do you got? What was the like second benefit? Yeah. Of them that protects the culture? It protects the culture, and the second benefit is um, it is going to leave. Uh, it's going to force white people to leave them alone. Okay, so they're not going to be taken over by any other country until we defeat them in World War Two. Yes. See, the Americans are coming in hot. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what is going to be the most powerful country in Asia? China's peak is over until the 1950s. China will never be as powerful as it was under Neon ever again. Ever again. Ever again until the 1950s, and that's when we started having our communist revolution and we started having the hybrid of communism, communism government, capitalistic economy, which is why China is as powerful as it is today. China will never recover until the 1950s. What will become the most powerful country in Asia? Joseph. No. We consider more of a European, but no. Guys, we're literally talking about them. Japan. Japan. Japan will become the most powerful country in the world. Why? In Asia. Why? Henry. They're not going to be conquered. They're not going to be conquered. They're not going to have the white people coming in and destroying it and eradicating all the cultures and the financial economic arrangements. They are going to be completely isolated. So when they come out of it, the Japanese are going to have to play catch up and they're going to play catch up really, really hard. And who are they going to lean on? The Americans, after the American Civil War, all of our American Southern generals went to Japan. Isn't that wild? Wild. Okay, you're thinking of like Lee and stuff, just send them on a boat to Japan. It's like Japan, that's crazy. Anyway, okay, I'm telling you this so you can kind of start seeing the trend. Because they didn't get conquered by white people during this time period in the next hundred years, when they come out, they're behind but they're gonna shoot themselves ahead. So who is the first Asian country to industrialize? Japan. Japan, because they're gonna lean on the Americans to help them. Who is going to be the most powerful country in Asia? Japan. Who is the United States gonna go to war with? Japan. Okay, we would have lost World War II if it wasn't for what invention? Atomic bombs. Atomic bombs, okay. We dropped the first atomic bomb on Nagasaki. The Japanese are so hardcore, they said, we don't think the Americans have a second one. We don't surrender. We literally just killed 600,000 people in an instant, and they still were like, no, we're not surrendering. Now, three days after that, what did we do a second time? Bombed Hiroshima. We bombed Hiroshima. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh shit, they, <laughs> they might have a third. And they surrendered. Ladies and gentlemen, we probably would not have won World War II if it wasn't for the atomic bomb. Because we didn't have 
the determination as a nation to beat Japan for the long haul. Okay, Americans have a very short attention span, can we agree? Okay, an all-out war effort is very, very oppressive. It's very, very hard, and Americans don't have that type of culture to self-sacrifice. Guess what country does? Japan. Japan. And we're gonna see, this is gonna be a huge issue. Okay, so the rise of Japan is starting right now. Guess what we're gonna spend a lot of time second semester talking about? Japan. Japan, so it's a really big deal that you're starting to process this information. They're gonna shut down in 1630, they're not gonna get reopened until towards the end of the 18th century. With that being said, they're gonna shoot themselves way ahead of all the Asian countries, and they're going to do terrible atrocities, which we'll get to later. Okay, Japan. China. Okay, in China, you need to know we're under Ming Dynasty. Okay, you need to know that they are going to allow white people, okay, Europeans to trade, and then they're like, oh shit, this isn't good. And then they try closing the ports to the Europeans. So they allow the Europeans in, and then they're like, oh no. <laughs> okay, and then they try blocking them out. How does that go? Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. They go so far as in to build, destroy ports so they can't handle large boats. Because who's bringing the large boats? The Europeans, they go so far to start destroying their own ports to stop Europeans from coming in because, we'll talk about this when we read a bunch of primaries, uh, essentially all of Asia considers the white, uh, the Europeans, uh, essentially like a cockroach. Once you see one, you know there's a hundred others somewhere else and they're just slowly eating away at the infestation of these countries. It's pretty accurate. <laughs> what do you got? So did they like stop trade with the Europeans because they started to like yeah, they start taking over and start abusing the system, and they don't follow the rules. Because the Europeans, hi, what's more cost effective, stealing or purchasing? Stealing. Yeah, we don't steal because it's wrong and there are consequences. But if you could steal and there weren't really any consequences, would you steal? Yeah. Oh my God! Some of you are like, yeah, yeah, I would. Okay. Yeah, I see you. See, I don't have like. I don't have the confidence to do it. You know what I mean? I would feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad. I'm like, I have a lot of guilt. It depends on who you're stealing from. Ooh, good point. Yeah. If you're stealing from the man or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But if you're stealing from the old lady next door, it'd be sad. Yeah. There we go. What? The man is like the government, dude. Huh? Stealing from the old lady next door. India! <laughs> India is your next one. Okay. Actually, let's do some boards. Yeah, let's do that. Because Neil gets so cranky when he has to pick up a board and he doesn't get to use the board. Yeah, you. Yeah, haven't you made that comment? On your whiteboard, please tell me, what are my first three empires, maritime empires to rise in order? Give me my three maritime empires that rise in order. No idea where the board says just up. So it might be right or it could be horribly wrong. Oh, we have a lot of wrong answers, but we got one right one. What is it, Taylor? Okay, Portugal, Spain, England. Those are your three maritime empires in order. The Dutch are not going to overtake the British, but they're going to come really close. Is everyone clear on that? They are huge rivals to the British, but they're never gonna beat the British, okay? So, on the top of your notes, I would write down, what is wrong? There's a bug on my, my, my board. <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what it was. Anyway. I'm now concerned for the safety of us all. Is it like a cockroach or something? I, I just talked shit about cockroaches. Of cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Okay. You need to know, is the Portuguese the rise first with Prince Henry and the navigation school? Yes, they start all this stuff, but then they're gonna fall pretty quick to the Spanish because the Spanish hate them and will do anything they possibly can to beat them, yes? Spanish rise, but then the Spanish get too caught up in the Protestant Reformation and all this other drama, and then they fall. In 1588, we have the rise of the 
The British. And the British are going to be in power as the most powerful country in the world until 1918. 1918, 1588 to 1918. And who's going to beat them in 1918? America! Yeah! We're going to come in the most powerful nation in the world. We're going to come in and swoop in and win World War I for the team. And then we are going to become a production mecca for the whole world. And then we are going to keep up that power with the technology of the atomic bomb and all these other things. We're going to come up. So it's really important you do understand it's Portugal, then it's Spain, then it's England. On your whiteboard, what are the two African societies that will benefit from the Portuguese? Now keep in mind, long term, are they going to benefit? No, short term they do. Good, Scott. There you go, on your whiteboard, please tell me what year does Japan close its borders? Good, what do we got, Friar? On your whiteboard, who is the only country that is allowed to trade with Japan? Good, who is it? You tell. The Dutch, on your whiteboard, please tell me. Yes. Uh, please tell me what is uh, what will break the economic backbone of Africa by the colonization of what region of Africa? What will break African independence? Good. What do we got, Cassidy? The Swahili Coast. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Uh, please tell me... No, we're going to go. Here we go. Okay, so European, right? Oh, we just have British down, right? Is that the title I told you, right? India. 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 Okay. Okay. So, in 1588, the British rise. What happens in 1588 that allowed the British to rise? Joseph. So what? The defeat of the Spanish Armada, and that's the official tipping point for the beginning of the rise of the British. You need to know in 1588, the Spanish Armada is defeated by the English, which puts them as the world controller. Okay, they're the most powerful nation in the world at this point. You need to know that the British are going to focus on India. That is their major focus. It is going to be theirs until 1947. <laughs> they are going to start their... Uh, conquering around 1640. They're going to take over parts of India and they're going to hold on to it until 1947. That's a long time. Okay? You need to know they're going to refer to J India as the jewel in the crown. It is their most important colony. And it evolved, but why? There's two major reasons why it's going to be their most important colony. James, why do you think? Uh, they trade a lot with them. Um, it's not their co they're going to become a colony, so they're not trading with them. Parker? The amount of materials. Yes, the raw materials they have there is insane. They also have a huge, a huge population, which is going to come in secondary uh, later. So they are going to have plenty of raw materials, and they're also going to have a huge population. Okay. So, the British, when they first arrive in India, and you need to have that language down, when they first arrive to India, it is the Mughal Empire in power. Who can raise their hand and tell me a fun fact about the Mughal, besides the fact they're one of my faves? What's a fun fact? Gotta be. Taj Mahal, Shah Jahan. What's another fun fact, Hayden? They were like the wealthiest empire. Yeah, they're one of the wealthiest empires of all time, Henry. Yeah, they're going to try to create Sikhism because we've got to solve some of these problems. Okay, they're just great people. Akbar is quite a guy. Can we agree? What a dude. Anyway, so when they first arrive in India, it's under the control of the Mughal. The Mughal, do you think they saw them as a threat? No, no because who's making more money than anyone at this time? The, the Mughal. So they see these white people showing up on these weird-looking boats and these weird-looking outfits, and they're like, sure, dude, do you. Okay, so the British were like, hey, let's sign a contract. And they're like, okay, we can sign a contract. So they sign a contract to take over the port of Goya. You need to know this. So they're going to sign contracts. British people love contracts. 
Okay, they're gonna do it to the Native Americans too. Do you think the Native Americans had any idea what land was? Like ownership of land? They had no idea, so they're signing away all these things and the British are like, see, he signed it away. Who's over the port of what? Goya, G-O-A. Okay, so what is going to happen is that the British are then going to use that contract as a way to exploit the Indians. Economically, politically, and militarily. The British are going to get the Mughal to sign contracts, and then they are going to exploit those contracts politically, economically, and militarily. Okay? So, what was promised in the contracts, the British are going to go out of their way to cheat their way out of. Because is it more cost effective to steal or to pay? To steal. So, they're going to just start stealing stuff from the Indians. How do you think the Indians felt? No, they're going to fight like hell, but who's going to win? The British are going to win. They're also going to fight their way through. Now, a standing army is not allowed in any country. You can't just bring a standing army into another ar country, correct? So it was very clear in the contracts, the Indians said no British military. So the British were like, that's fine, not a problem. So the Indians were like, OK, we got this. Well, what happened is, as soon as the British got there, they started paying crazy huge sums of money to Indians to fight for the British. So, inside India, we have something called the Sepoy Army, S-E-P-O-Y. These are Indians who fight for the British. The British. So, all of a sudden, the British now have a standing and they have a standing army in Goya, and they're going to use it and expand the territory. Because if they don't have to pay for it, it's more cost effective. What is it? What do you got, Andy? S-E-P-O-Y, support. And those are going to come back again. We're going to have a support rebellion. We're going to have all these things. Okay. So you also need to understand underneath in India, you need to have the East India Trading Company, which is controlled by the British. East India Trade Company, and in parentheses near it, you need to have EOC. That's its abbreviation, EOC, East India Trade Company. That's just what they call it, the EOC. Okay? You need to know this company has all the rights of a country. This company has all the rights of a country. We're going to be talking about the EOC for literally the next 16 weeks. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get disbanded until 1912. Like, so we're in this for a long time. Have you ever watched Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. Do you know the little coin that they're flipping? And like, if you have a coin, you turn dead. And if you put the coin back, you get to live, yes? The actual coin trunks that everyone's trying to find, all the dead people are trying to get, yes? Yeah. They're actually EOC coins. East India Trade Company, because they stole it from the, the British. See, but this is like a good record. Why do I park? What do you got, Taylor? Is it EIC or EOC? EIC, this is, a, it's confusing, and I'm going to change it. I just haven't changed it. EOC is what I need you to know. Okay? So. You need to know, the British rivals at this stage are the Dutch, okay? The British rivals at this point are the Dutch. The Spanish have been defeated in the Spanish Armada. They're no longer a threat. The Portuguese are just limping along and they're just focusing on Brazil, okay? Right now, the biggest rivalry on the open seas is the Dutch. The Dutch have an East India Trade Company, and you need to know that name. Dutch East India Trade Company, and it's known as the VOC. Okay, Dutch have their own trading company, and it's called the VOC, is their abbreviation. Okay, they are going to, the British are going to focus on making contracts, the Dutch are going to focus on exclusivity. So they are going to make agreements with countries and say, I will be the only country you're allowed to trade with. And people will say, yeah. What's an example of this you already know? 
The Jap Japanese are going to be the only ones allowed to trade with the Dutch. They're also going to do this with Malai. Okay, all of the spices like cardam, uh, allspice, all that stuff can only be sold to the Dutch. Because of that, and you guys are going to love this for your next identifier, in AP Art History, you're really going to start studying Dutch art. Okay, so Vermeer is one of the best Dutch painters, okay? And a lot of his art is going to be reflected in a merchant because the Netherlands is going to become uh, second in the world for the most powerful maritime empires. They're never going to beat the British, but they get pretty damn close. So the Dutch are going to rise in power and become very, very effective. What? So does the Canaanites choose to only trade with the Dutch? Yes. Because the Dutch are tolerable. Have you ever met a Dutch person? No. Oh, they're really lovely people. They're very much boundaries. They tell you exactly how things are and very straightforward, and they're not very touchy feely, and they're just like, this is how it is. The British are tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Portuguese, eh, a little shady, right? So the Dutch were very much easier to deal with, so that's why most countries are going to prefer them. However, it is the British who are going to win. Perfect. All right, so we have the EOC and the VOC. Are we excited? So we do know that they are fighting and feuding, and they're going to be killing each other for a solid 200 years. It's great. Okay. Skip a space center at the Americas. I wish we were doing a map. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, for the Americas, you need to know that the French, because we really haven't talked about the French, the French are going to take over, they're going to colonize Canada, and in parentheses, I would write their most important colony, okay, and they're going to colonize central U.S. Obviously, the U.S. is in the U.S. at the time, but we know that Louisiana Purchase, hello, are we familiar with this? Okay, that's what the French are. Okay, now, speaking of the Americas, the French, in Canada, they're going to build cities. They're going to build Quebec, what's the M one? Montreal, yes, okay, so they're going to build Quebec and Montreal and all that stuff. In what we would call continental U.S., do they really build anything? No, they only build one city. What city in the United States has a French quarter? Louisiana. New Orleans. New Orleans is on the mouth of... Uh, the Mississippi, so it controls trade all the way up and down the Mississippi. It's a perfect port system, uh, but that's really the only city they build in what we would call continental United States. They are going to build cities in Canada. You need to know that the French are here for fur trapping. They are really into furs. Beavers, specifically. Why? What are beaver skin really known for? You can still buy beaver skin boots and stuff. They're super expensive. But you can't buy them, Henry? They're like insulating. Yeah. They're insulating and they're waterproof. It's one of the few waterproof furs out there. There's a lot of fur that's water repellent, but beaver skin is one of the very, these are the weird things you learn. Like why do I know that beaver skin is water repellent? Uh, completely water repellent, which is really interesting. Anyway, so they're here for furs. So ladies and gentlemen, do you think the French are bringing their wives to go fur trapping in the American West? No. no. So they are coming, men are coming. And if it's only men coming, what have we learned? They have lots of sex with the natives. Okay? So we, have, we know that the French are going to be very open to mixing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if they're fur trappers, they're obviously out in the woods. And who are the most experts on the American woods? American. The Native Americans. So who do the French depend on heavily? So who do they have a friendly relationship with? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You need to know that the French are literally mating and starting families with the natives. You need to know that the French are incredibly dependent on the natives. And you need to know that they have a very tight bond uh, because it's made them wealthy, and they have, like, native babies running around. And that's cute. Okay? So, the French are very much embedded. British. Here we go. You need to know that the British are bringing their... 
They're bringing their wives because they're doing a lifestyle change and not an economic opportunity. The French are here for? For economic opportunity. The Spanish are here for? They're here for profit, economic opportunity. It's only the British who are here for? Lifestyle. So make sure you understand that. So because they're here for lifestyles, they're bringing their wives. So since they're bringing their wives, what is a big no-no? Having sex with the natives. So the social class is white people versus everybody. Okay? So that is the big difference because you're, uh, British people are bringing their wives because they're doing lifestyle change. Okay? You need to know that the English are the most repressive against the natives. They have no tolerance for them. They have no need for them. Okay? Because are the British enslaving them, the natives? No. They are doing what? Taking the land. Well, they're taking the land, obviously. But who are they bringing in? They're bringing slaves. They're bringing slaves in. Eventually, they're going to try doing indentured servitude, but that's going to fail epically. But we'll get to that tomorrow. How much time do I have? Kaden, we're starting to touch like real things that like affect us. This happened like a million years ago. <laughs> it's not a million years ago. We're only like 400 years ago. Basically a million years ago. Oh my goodness. Have you ever been to New Orleans? Yeah. I got those beignets and they weren't that good. Oh, then you went to yeah, the wrong place. I Did you get them better. at uh... It's like a big tent place. Like at the place? I got them at the place. And they were really good, but like eight year old me would be disappointed. Why? It's all sugar. I mean, it's good, but it's not like, I don't know. It's not like kids. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like Cafe du What is it? Cafe du Monde. Did you go to Cafe du Monde? They're so good. They're good. They're so good. Bye, sweetie. Have a good day.